so hyped but i'm happy to be hyped instead of stressed and depressed but today we cutting off them them toxic mixy one foot in one foot out don't know if they want to love you or kill you them toxic envious jealous friends and you know you got one because you clicked on this video like god send me a sign boom here it is <laughs> it's me <laughs> but um I put notes in my notepad because you know, if you watch my videos before, I be rambling and I forget what I be talking about. This video is supposed to be about toxic friends. I'll turn it into a video about elephants because I love them. But anyways, first things first, try and talk it out. But if you see a pattern, cut them off. Because one thing about it, like if people love you and they want to change, they'll change. And then one thing, like people can apologize over and over. But what matters is the changed behavior. If the behavior never changed, you're going to keep getting your feelings hurt. Don't do that, sis. Cut them off. No matter how bad it hurts, I'm giving advice to myself while I'm giving advice to y'all because we got to be greater. <laughs> we got to do better. We know better, so we need to do better, right? Okay, period. The first type of friend I want to talk about, well, friend that's not really a friend, is the copycat friend. The one that all you baddies and creatives will and keep like having. We're going to keep these weirdos around us because we're rare. Everybody wants to be like us. So we all had that copycat friend. Like they befriend you just to copy your lifestyle. Like they buddy you to study you. Boom. They buddy you to study you. Like they, it's, it's, it's nothing more than that. They copy you and then they don't like, it's, it's, it's apparent that they're trying to be you and it gets scary. I had one of these before. We gonna call her, uh, Brittany. Brittany would try and downplay it so bad, but I started seeing a twin of myself, literally. It started off because I, I don't even want to get too deep. It was just a, a jealousy thing, but they people will hate you so much that they become you because they, you're the only thing that they watch you get what i'm saying they buddy you they study you they become you once you cut them off they have to find themselves again because they lost themselves trying to be you i should be a, a preacher because i'm really killing it right now proud of me proud of me <laughs> keep watching my ads so i can proud of myself but they all have different like hidden motives the copycat friend is not your friend they're using you to develop a character that's not themselves. They want to be you. You have a raw personality. You're a raw person. They want to be you. So they're going to try so hard to be you. And once they fail, that's when the hate and jealousy starts. Because can't nobody be you but you. And if you're that copycat friend, love yourself and be yourself. Because you can't be that person you're trying to be no matter what. No matter how many ideas you steal, you can't be that person. So love yourself. Because a jealous friend is a dangerous enemy. Next, we're going to talk about the friend that's never happy for you. So let's say um, I'm Keisha, right? And I just got this job that pays $100,000 a year. Me and my friends been struggling this whole time. And they love you while you're down. But once you the one, instead of leeching on and building you up to be great because somebody in the friend group got to be great if it's not all of us they start shooting you down they want you to do good but not better than them so okay i'm keisha i'm getting this hundred thousand dollar job right and i go to my friend beverly i'm like beverly i just got this job girl oh my god i can't believe it i'm almost in tears of joy i'm so happy and beverly's like oh i'm proud of you like she can barely smile. She just like, how did she get this before I did? We applied for the same job. How did she get it? Cut her off before she bring you down because she don't talk about you. Every time you complain about something about that job, I bet she'd be one like, you need to quit. Girl, that just draw the line, quit. Cause she don't want you to be there. That's the best thing that could happen for you, that hundred thousand dollar job. <laughs> but she hating, so. Mm. 
Which brings me to my next point. Pay attention to the ones that think they are in like some secret competition with you. Like everything is a competition. Like y'all are on some competitive swim team when y'all are supposed to be friends. Like uh, she, she, in her head, y'all are rivalries, but on God, you think that this is your best friend. I promise you, she's not and you know it. Why is everything a competition? I put my pants on first, girl, I, okay, weirdo. That is a sick, like a, a sick mindset to have. Why are we in competition? We're friends, we're supposed to level up together. It should not be a race. Oh, I accomplished this because of you. And then a lot of people, parents do that. Like a lot of people, parents put that in their head that they gotta be better than the next person around them. So they can't even be f like, they can't even have friends because their parents like, you see so-and-so doing this, you need to do better. Man, I had this one friend, she was raw. And we was raw together, but she had a boyfriend, right? And I'm hustling. She was she was sitting back. She didn't want to make no money. That's her prerogative. But I'm hustling. We in college, right? And she raw for letting me take her her dorm room was bigger than mine. So I was taking clients in her room. Her boyfriend coming there. Oh my God! He boosted me up. He boosted my head up. All I could see out her her eyes because I've had friends like her before this. I ended up cutting this girl off because she turned out to be a little toxic. But um, I had friends like her before this, so I sensed it right when he started building me up. And he was my dog too, he was cool. But he like, Lord, I love the way you hustling. Da -da -da. And he could have been doing that just to tell her, hey, you need to get up off your and get some money because I'm tired, you know? But she started looking at me funny. That's when the competition started. Ever since then, she was trying to keep up with me and she could not. And it shouldn't have been like that. We were fine before all that, I swear. We was, we was together. I was leveling up off of her. That's what friends do, you feed off of each other. It should never be a competition. It should never be you holding nuts on where you got things from because you scared if I get it, like I'ma take over with it or something like that. You get what I'm saying? No, I'm not gonna tell you where I got my shoes from because if, I tell you where I got my shoes from and you get them, your outfit might be better than mine. What? You're weird. I hate it. I don't like that. Ew. So next is the two-sided friend. So I already told y'all, you got the one that's trying to copy you. She can't copy you, so she ends up hating you, meaning she's never happy for you, number two. Then she starts being in competition with you for what reason i don't know but now there's a competition y'all basically enemies but you keeping this friendship going for what reason i don't know so number four the two-sided friend because y'all still friends but it's only in private now in public she dissing you but this your friend no she don't like you girl <laughs> cut her off <laughs> get rid of her <laughs> cut that baggage off take out the trash she's two-sided she can't show you no love in public because she's too busy dissing your name in private in the streets she is throwing you she dragging you through the dirt but you know in private she like girl i love you you're my everything that's just how I go. She can't show you no love on social media. She can't be in your comments. She could probably like a picture or something, but she can't be in your comments because she blabbing off to her, to your, to, it could be a group of y'all. The other friends, she talked about you to them. Like it's a beef or something, but it's only her that's <laughs> beefing with you. You know nothing about this, but she talking about you to everybody else. So sign number five, do they threaten your values? Do they make it their goal to embarrass you? Like say you have, okay, this is your friend, you have a bond, and one thing she always knew about you was that you didn't smoke. You didn't smoke the ganja. So she, um, y'all get around some boys or whatever, and she real catty. You know them friends that like to act different in front of boys. Those aren't your friends either, cut them off. But y'all get around boys, they smoking, and you like, no, nah, I don't smoke. And then she turns up and she like, stop being lame, oh my God. But girl, for years I've been telling you I didn't smoke and you didn't have a problem, but now we get around these Negroes and you got something else to say. That's a problem. That's not a friend. That's one of your values. That's one of your morals. That's one thing that you, you hold close to yourself. You don't smoke. It's something simple as I don't smoke. 
Haven't been smoking. Never picked up a peace pipe. But she get around some boys and she like, oh my God, stop it. Why are you doing, you doing too much relax. I smoke the, smoke the peace pipe. Smoke it. Ma'am, for what? Why? So number six is the leech or the clout chaser friend. The one that's like, they, they keep tabs on you. They only check in if they want something and they, they, they periodically check in just to make sure y'all still cool. Y'all never have deep intimate conversations. They just want to be able to say they know you. You know, they're always there when you're up, but when you're down, they know where to be found. The leech, the cloud chaser friend. When you're up, they're there, they're cheering you on. They like, oh my God, I've known her since first grade. When you're down, you can see them and they'll just keep walking. It's no bond, they're just there. Cause if you make it, they wanna be able to claim you. They wanna be able to pop up. Don't be weak, they don't mess with you. Don't mess with them. No halfway friends, no associates, no. We either family or I don't know you. And that's just how it go over here. Child, child boo. It is what it is. I gotta take a break. Now I'm getting a headache too. This light is very bright. I don't see how people just do these girl talk videos, boy talk, whatever you gonna do. We kick it out, kick it gangster. But anyways, up next, the Living Shade Room blog, AKA Messy People. If all they sit around and do is talk about other people, what makes you think that they're sparing you and your business when you're not around? They don't, you become the topic of conversation. <laughs> Bingo. Why does everybody in the world know certain things about you? Because they sit on their phone, they sit in a group, whenever they can be talking to strangers and bring up, yeah, my friend, da 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 da. I don't like those type of people. My business is my business. If I choose to tell you something, it should never leave us. Don't even bring me up in a positive light, unless it can put me on to something, you know, money or something like that. But don't be like, if somebody down and out, well, the same thing happened to Lauren. That girl don't need to know my business. She don't need to know my business. Let me tell her and uplift her. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm in a room, if you're in a room and it's a money room, bring up my name. Bring up my name. Bring up my businesses, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But other than that, my business should not, I hate that. I am a private person. I get on here and talk, but I don't tell my business. What can y'all say besides that girl do YouTube? <laughs> like, I'm a private person. I'm not secretive. If you ask me the right way, I can answer a question. But I do not like people knowing my business. If I tell you one thing and you tell other people, even if it's like something as simple as I'm at the store. Oh, yeah, Lauren's at the store. Don't do that. That just grinds my gears. Keep my business to me and whoever I choose to tell it to. I hate when people know my business before I tell them, period. Straight like that, that's it. Now, number eight is the girl who's a part of the can't keep a friend click. Like she's always in drama or falling out with someone. She can't stay in a consistent friend group for more than a month. Like this girl is a problem. If you're over 18, you should not be consistently in drama gear. Okay, maybe if you just can't find real friends, I was blessed by God. Maybe if you can't just find real friends, I get it. But publicly falling out and drama, you gotta separate yourself silently. You don't owe people explanations because I'm really aware you're over 18, you know what you be doing. I shouldn't have to bring up, yeah, I'm cutting you off because da da da. We're not doing the Declaration of Independence. I'm just gonna cut you off. I don't have to explain anything on paper or verbally. <laughs> Peace out. But anyways, you know, those people that, um, they just always in drama. So bring it back to the friend that I just recently cut off. It wasn't recent. It was a while ago, but that was the last little toxic friend. Um, the one with the boyfriend that I spoke on earlier. She could not keep friends. Like why, why is it that when I befriended you, all these people started looking at me funny. I'm a people person, I have a lot of friends, I know a lot of people, I'll take that back. I'm a people person, a lot of people know me. 
I have a small friend group. I'm a quality over quantity type of person. But anyways, I befriended this one girl. And all this like stuff, I, I had people looking at me funny and everything. And I'm this happy-go-lucky person. I'm walking on campus and this girl's like, And then this boy's like, and then it's me like, cause it's like, okay, what is going on? It took me, until I stepped back from her, I realized this is what she attracts and I'm around her, so I'm attracting that too. People get to know me and they like, oh, okay, but I shouldn't have to go through that. Let me cut you off, Miss Messy Pops. I don't wanna hang with you, you know what I'm saying? That's a target on my head. That's like dating a drug dealer that be finessing people on the low. If he scammed the wrong person, they coming for you to get back at him. So you need to hang low. Cut him off. Okay. <laughs> Had to take it somewhere that y'all could probably understand. My subscribers are different. <laughs> Next is the narcissist. The narcissist. That's a lot of M I crickleted crickleted I crickleted crickleted I humpback humpback. That's a lot of S's. The narcissist, the narc. So, anyways, the narcissist is the person that lacks self awareness. Like they think it's everybody's fault but theirs. They never see their wrongdoings, and they they're always confused. Like, okay, go back to the girl that's always falling out with people. She has never, it's never clicked in her mind that she be doing stuff wrong to get cut off by all these people. She think it's always their fault. But what did you do? You ever had somebody tell you a story, but it wasn't the full story because it's like something not adding up. What did you do? What was your role in this? That's the narcissist. Narcs, they play a lot of games, but friendship wise, don't let nobody just pull you down. Or I had a little tearjerker friend it's being hot in here. I'm taking off all my clothes. So anyways, I gotta paste this. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, I had this friend and I've known her since elementary school. I used to be dumb once. I used to keep people around me just because I knew them. But until I got around real people, I thought that's just something I had to deal with. I thought everybody was weird, phony, fake, toxic, jealous, envious. I thought everybody was like that. But when I got to college, I seen new people and I was like, man, I don't have to deal with this. I'm getting a headache from this girl every day. Then I get around somebody else and it's peaceful. Feeling like I'm, I'm on a beach somewhere, but we not even near the beach. You know what I did? You know, you did what I'm saying? Like it was just peaceful. Then I'm with you and I'm stressed out. Something gotta change and it's you, <laughs> bye. But anyways, I had this friend, she'll do so much wrong and then she'll cry so she wouldn't get beat up. Yes, it got serious to the point where I said, next time I see you, I'm beating you up and I ain't see you for two weeks. Next time I seen her was in the principal's office. Yeah, this was uh, my senior year of high school. Or was it my junior? I don't know, but for her to be one of my friends, she started up these rumors about everybody in the friend group. I don't even know if they were rumors. I don't know what was going through her mind, but if someone doesn't keep their own business to themselves, they're gonna tell other people's business and make up stuff as they go. And I don't know if everybody else was a rumor. I just know mine was, and I took it to heart because it's like, don't mess with, with my reputation. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then, especially if it's false, if it's true, I'm gonna be like, girl, okay, that's what happened. It was false. And my homeboys knew, everybody knew that wasn't my character, but you blabbed me your mouth. And then it's the fact that I asked her, I said, who started these rumors? And she was acting like, by the end of that school day, cause word got around, I figured out. She was sitting in the classroom, just telling all my business. I said, all right, poop. Then the guilty, the guilty conscience started going crazy. She blowing up my phone. What's wrong? Why, why didn't you, what's, what's going on? I ain't say too much. Cause even at 12, even in 12th grade, I think this was my senior year. I really don't know. Even at that age, I knew better than to cause a scene or to talk about anything because that's just your character. Like you're just weird. So man, I told her, I said, yeah, next time I see you, I'm beating you up. She ain't come to school. It could have been two weeks or two days. It was more than two days. It, it probably was two weeks. She finally came to school. 
I seen her in the principal's office. I got called to the principal's office. I told them the truth. They sided with me because they understood why I was mad. They did say I can't beat her up, but she was just sitting there crying. No, explain why you lied on me. Don't do that. And I'm sitting there, I'm telling them, and I'm like, I still want to. I'm a woman of my word. What's up? <laughs> you know? But she was just sitting there crying. We get to college because I forgave the girl and all that because I got a big heart. We get to college, she pulled the same stunt, man. She, okay, look, this gonna have to be a story time. Just, you know, drop in the comments if you want this story time because we, this is bizarre. I'm, this, this playing back in my head. I'm 21 now. This happened when I was 18. This is playing back in my head and I'm like, I cannot believe I sat around for this, you know? If you want a story time, come on, I'll do it. Cause it ain't nothing for me to pull. So yeah, if you want a story time, just comment down below because I cannot, That that is a whole different video. If you want specifics on my toxic friends, cause I've been around a lot, seen a lot of this little bitty world, then you know, just comment down below. But anyways, next we're gonna talk about disloyalty. This should have been the first one, but all of those things are signs of disloyalty or envy, you know. But um, I talked about the two-faced friend. Now it's about complete disloyalty. Like if people, okay, for example, like a lot of girls can be boy crazy. If they crossing you out over a man or a little boy, they gonna cross you out for anything. And that's just like, if a, if if you just weak, like loyalty gotta be in you. Everybody on this earth is not loyal. Everybody on this earth does not have morals or they don't live by a certain code as in right or wrong, or I shouldn't do this to this person. They just do things. They lack self-awareness. They don't understand where their karma comes from. They just think the world is just hating on them. No, you get what you put out. So, you know, Disloyalty, to me, you don't ever have to question how I'm gonna move when you're not around. I'm the same person 24 seven, no matter who I'm with. Now, around strangers, I might be a little different cause I be a little weird. I be real quiet and weird around strangers. Like, I'm not talking, y'all don't need to know I'm, I got a crackhead personality. Like, I be real quiet. But you know, you don't have to worry about me saying, um, yeah, I can't even picture. Y'all know what disloyalty is. I can't, I can't even picture how to do it. I can't make an example about it, but it's just like, you shouldn't have to question your friends like about how they're gonna act or portray you or anything when you're not around. If you do, they're not your friend, cut them off. So disloyalty, basically the backstabbers, you shouldn't have a friend that holds stuff over your head or like ugh, just people that just are foul, period. Like they don't live by no code. They do you and anybody else wrong. If people disrespecting their parents, they definitely gonna disrespect you. If, if they, you know, if they lack morals, they definitely lack loyalty. It's not a two way street. It's not super confusing. It's just, it is what it is. You can't grow up one day and say, I just wanna be loyal. It gotta be in you. If it's not in you, if you're not a real one, you're just not a real one. This is to the real ones that's surrounded by the fake ones. Because the fake one's not going to understand this video. I guarantee you that. But this one is, so that was 10. 10 signs. But I got a bonus. Pay attention to your nervous system. Pay attention to your body. When you leave from being around this person, how do you feel? When you go around this person, are you anxious? Are you getting butterflies or are you getting cramps? You know, does it feel like the devil is inside of your stomach or does it feel like flowers and stuff? Like a first date type of vibe. Pay attention to your nervous system. Your body will never do you wrong. You know, I, I, I'm a spiritual person and I just, I'm sensitive. So I pay attention to everything. Like I don't have to say a word. I can come to someone. We can be completely silent and I can tell if this is my type of person or not. I don't know what that's called, but I just feel everything. Like I can just look in your eyes and see what I need to see. Don't know what that's about, but I don't know if everybody else can do that, but pay attention to your nervous system. Just pay attention to your body. You get a headache after leaving someone. Pay attention to everything. It's all a sign. You ask God for a sign, he shouldn't have to spell it out for you. Your body should be able to tell you. That's just a gift from God himself. But yeah, 
that's it for this video i done got really hot because i'm a hottie but yeah like comment share and subscribe i started a new virtual styling business that'll be linked down below support your girl follow me on my instagram i'm about to get more active because it's almost capricorn season and i got so much stuff that i want to do and god is going to help me do it watch watch i'm so excited i'm sorry i've been trying to keep my composure i feel like i did really good this video but watch my smoke But yes, <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video.